the woman who should have been the first in space, Jerry Cobb. Even though she was just as capable as men, Jerry Cobb was denied the opportunity to go to space. She passed all of the same tests as the Mercury 7, and yet they did not allow her in space. The testing of Jerry and the 12 other women was abruptly ended because NASA did not want the program. Even though she was shy, Jerry fought long and hard at congressional hearings. However, Jerry and the other women's efforts weren't enough to keep the program going. Jerry compromised with her dreams and found a new dream as a missionary pilot. Jerry is a trailblazer and has won several awards. Even though she deserved to go to space and she never got her chance, she made her place in history and in the hearts of Amazonian people. Jerry Cobb was born on March 5, 1931 in Norman, Oklahoma. At an early age, her father introduced her to flying. Because she started early, she earned her pilot's license on her 16th birthday. After she received her commercial pilot's license at the age of 18, she gave airplane rides to earn money. Adults were $1 and children were 50 cents. She eventually was hired at Fleetway Incorporated and she became good friends with her boss, Jack Ford. Soon enough, they became closer than friends and they were engaged for two years before a tragedy struck. One day, when Jack was on a delivery, there was a malfunction in his plane and it exploded. He died almost instantly. She had a, a speech impediment when she was very young, and I think she was a very kind of isolated person, and she didn't communicate very well, so flying was her way of freedom. Heartbroken after Jack's death, Jerry set her eyes to space. Dr. William R. Lovelace was the founder of the Lovelace Clinic in Albuquerque, New Mexico. NASA selected Dr. Lovelace to conduct astronaut testing for the Mercury 7 program. Because they are much smaller and lighter than men, he thought that women would be good candidates for spaceflight. She whispered to me, she said, I'm in a secret program for women taking the astronaut test. Lovelace was really a visionary. Jackie Cochran was a famous aviator and a good friend of Dr. Lovelace. She was too old to participate in the program, so she helped by providing funding. Because Jerry was young and an excellent pilot, Dr. Lovelace contacted her to see if she would like to participate in a series of tests that would tell if she would be capable to go to space. We were not there to be compared to the men. We were, we were there to see how well we could do. The tests Jerry had to go through not only tested her physically, but emotionally also. One of the tests included putting their hands into freezing cylinders to see how they reacted to the shock. There were several other tests that included surviving in a sensory deprivation tank and having freezing water shot into their ears to mimic vertigo. There were all kinds of oddball things that, that they tested that I've never heard of before. Lots and lots of x-rays. Generally, the women did better in their cardiovascular tests. So um, things about pulmonary function, you know, lung capacity, oxygen uptake, things like that. On average in the 1950s, women did better in the isolation tests where, and the sensory deprivation tests in both uh, in tests in the United States, Britain and Canada. So that, and I know that is a place where she did very well. After Jerry finished testing in Albuquerque, New Mexico, Dr. Lovelace sent her to Oklahoma City to complete additional testing. Once all of the women completed the testing, Dr. Lovelace sent out a telegram congratulating them and informing them to prepare because they were about to travel to Pensacola, Florida to train. As many of the women were about to start packing, they received a short telegram simply saying that the training was canceled, but nobody knew why. When I got the word, uh, it was just a couple of days before I was to get on the airplane and go down to Pensacola. I always say I was an unemployed astronaut, so N-O-T, not. Jerry, of course, was very upset with the training being canceled. She and Jane Hart, another member of Mercury 13 and wife of Senator Philip Hart, attended congressional hearings on why the program should continue. I mean, she fought and 
wrote letters and did, went and made sure there was a, a congressional hearing. I mean, she really fought hard. I think that, that was very brave of her. I mean, she was a great pilot, but that was something she was passionate about. And then it became about the unfairness that she was fighting. Jerry Cobb was thrust into the spotlight, and she did not like it. She was very uncomfortable being in the spotlight and, and, and having reporters asking her questions and having to present, make presentations and go places and represent the group and all that kind of thing. And uh, she's very smart. She's a fine pilot. Uh, she did not like the spotlight at all. She's very attractive, blonde, wears her hair in a ponytail, and the, I think, juxtaposition at the time of, you know, a young woman in heels and a dress wearing a blonde ponytail, who then also was this excellent pilot who, who might be able to go into space, was something very attractive. Jackie Cochran said that the program would have to wait. Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson agreed and wrote, Let's stop this now. I mean, part of the story is the fact that the, the person who turned on her the most was an, another woman. There are a lot of women in power who don't support other women. Jerry didn't know what to do. She was just turned down from her lifelong dream. Jerry eventually self-compromised her dreams. She thought, If I am not helpful up in space, there must be something I can do here on Earth. After thinking long and hard what to do with her life, Jerry decided to work as a missionary pilot. She searched for missions she could work with, but no one would let her join, because she was a woman and being a missionary pilot was men's thing. Yet again, Jerry was turned down because of her gender. She decided that she would have to do this on her own. Jerry and her twin-engine bush plane flew over uncharted jungles of the Amazon rainforest. She drew her own rafts to navigate the area. After some time, the natives nicknamed her plane, The Bird. Since this was her own mission, she had to collect donations so that she could deliver seeds, vaccines, and anti-venoms. She sent out letters of thanks to those who donated money. As a devout Christian, Jerry taught the Amazonian people about God. Her words of God's saving grace and His eternal love brought them comfort through the hardest of times. And the years that she was flying in the jungle, down in, in Brazil, uh, we stayed in contact, and uh, and we have through the years. She fought like crazy to try to make it happen, even though it seemed impossible. And then when it finally didn't, she disappeared to the Amazon for sort of the rest of her life. I think her longevity in a field that was very male dominated when she got into it in the 1950s and that continues to be overwhelmingly male dominated to this day in terms of professional flying i would say that that is really where uh, she distinguished herself advocating for women um, and their opportunities in the early 1960s and then finding a way to continue her own passion through her missionary work on February 3, 1995, Eileen Collins became the first woman to pilot a space shuttle. Eileen fulfilled the Mercury 13's dream. Oh yeah, we were, we were all real thrilled about that. There are also several other women who have made an impact on space history. In 2017, Peggy Whitson became the longest serving American in space. In all, she spent 534 days in the International Space Station. If it weren't for Jerry and the rest of Mercury 13, she would have never gotten the chance. Jerry has won several awards due to her talent in aviation and for her missionary work. She is in the Oklahoma Hall of Fame and many others. And in 1981, she was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. So that's really important to me. It's just knowing the story. It's really knowing that these women struggle, that these women fought so hard for something. That, and, and it's a story we never even got to hear. Jerry Cobb's story is inspirational and motivational for many people around the world. Jerry fought long and hard with NASA to fly in space, but she never got her chance. She found more than a compromise in her missionary work and was able to help thousands of people who remember her as a sign of hope.